this year was very different for us. Um, we didn't bring anything with us. We didn't even bring ideas with us. We just came with a completely open mind. Um, and the first day we, we went around on a tour, we went to some factories and we, we went to a sculptor studio, Sophie Peach's place. And, uh, and then we had these four wonderful Cambodian craftspeople who came in and showed us how to work with rattan and, and bamboo. And that was the starting point. So then we all started from scratch for, with a new material, with no skills, um, and we had to do something with it. And that was a really, really good way to work. I think a much better way to work than last year. So it's a great improvement. Essentially what I've done, is that I've done three works, but they're sketches. It's a bit like when you're working your sketchbook and you're just drawing and you're trying things out and you're drawing like this and, oh, I like that and I'll draw it like this. And, and, and it's just an exploration so that you, you don't know where you're going. And that's the important thing. If you know where you're going, why go there? You know already. The, this sort of process is, is one of discovery, of trying to find out something by exploring the material we're making. So I started off with no idea really where I was going. The first one, I had a clear idea what I wanted to do. This was after we'd been driving around for the first couple of days. And I was appalled by the amount of rubbish I saw on the, on the scattered around uh, in the city and outside. And, and I, you know, I, I live by the sea. I know a lot about what happens in the sea. I know that all that rubbish will end up in the sea. And, and it breaks my heart to see that happening. And, and um, because it, it, you know, the, every little bit of plastic on the ground will fall into a little culvert, into a stream, into the river, into the ocean. And so I want to make a political statement about that. Um, so I, I've made basically a fishing net that's been pulled up out of the water, but instead of being full of fish, it's full of plastic. Life, life on this planet is being killed by plastic. This is, this is like saying that, that we must preserve life. Life is vital. It's, it's not just us. We have to keep everything alive to keep us alive. We're absolutely a part of the whole system of all, everything. So where do we end and where does nature begin? So we're absolutely a part of nature, so we, we have to treat nature very well because if we hurt nature, we hurt ourselves. So life depends on cleaning up that plastic. The, the, the next two works are both based on a spiral because a spiral is, is the basic life form. Uh, everywhere you see plants grow in spirals, um, creepers grow in spirals, you look at the, uh, the, flower, the sunflower seeds that, that they're laid out in spirals. Uh, shells grow in spirals, little tiny seashells and little plankton grow in spirals. The galaxy is a spiral on the, on the big scale. Everything's a spiral. Life is a spiral. So absolutely that's why I, I wanted to explore spiral and just see what I could do in the way of how I could build structures, patterns, forms that are based around a spiral. So I just started exploring. The third one is actually two spirals, one inside each other, sort of like that, kind of linking in the middle. Um, it's a bit like the yin-yang thing, but there's two and they, and they go out and they go out together and then they're just hung in this kind of um, enclosure which keeps them together. So that was purely an exploration of, of how you make a spiral using the materials we've got in the time that we've got. Um, basically tell that story of the spiral, the, 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 one of the basic building blocks of the universe. The forests are getting smaller and smaller and, and we can't go on cutting the forest down because we need them. Uh, and it takes several hundred years to re-establish the whole ecosystem of forest if you cut it. Um, so what we have to do now with more and more people wanting more and more things, you've got to find ways to make things more smart, so use less materials to make more stuff, and use materials which are easily, quickly replenished. And bamboo grows really fast once you've established the root system. Uh, and rattan grows fast if you've got a, a good forest to grow it in. So I think these are a really good materials for us to use in the future. I'm a printmaker as an artist, I'm a 2D artist, um, and while Donald was building the form, I decided to make a print version that helped me think through um, the process and the colors and the way that we might apply paper to our structure. Um, I had found uh, a patterned object at the hardware store that I really fell in love with. It's just a burnishing tool. And what I liked is it was kind of a burst of um, dots, and it felt like it had a lot of energy and, and activity to it. So I used that as a pattern, 
I don't have a printing press here, so I had to bring tools that were very low tech and I could just make simple shapes out of. So I, I created these relief tools that gave me the overall structure. We were having a discussion about what the meaning of life is for both of us. And we both um, had ideas that, that definitely connected and related to each other and we were able to distill it down to a simple form. The meaning of life is when you feel most alive. And I thought about when those moments are, and it's always when there's a connection happening. So it's either whether there's a mind-body connection or when you get a great idea or when you're immersed in an experience and having a wonderful um, feeling from it. It was really about when things come together and connect. So basically, we, we both agreed on a simple form that kind of worked for both of our concepts. A lot of my work's really lately been about um, astrophysics. I've been really interested in astrophysics and the, and the structure of the universe. And so the, the form that Sandra started to generate in her drawings was these two points coming together with this really bright little element of light inside it, which is the connection, the spark. And, um, and I thought of that as kind of like the, the beginning of the universe, the big bang, the beginning of everything really. And so um, that notion of this kind of juxtaposition, this, this junction where everything sort of happens seemed like a good metaphor for both of us, for, for what life, you know, the origin of life, the beginning of life, the, the energy in the universe. We're so fresh to Cambodia, neither of us have been here before. Um, we spent some time in South Asia, but a long time ago. Sort of every time we see um, Buddhist priests walking in the street, that, that orange of their robes popping out is just great. And I think that's one of the reasons we've been really interested in the orange and the yellows in our work. It's really connecting to that kind of almost shock of seeing the, the, the Buddhist priests wandering the streets because they look so different and their colours are so bright. And I'm using the same, some of the lines in, in Sandra's print of these really strong broken orange and yellow and grey lines and so I've been using those colours as well in, the, in both the lashing of the rattan but also the weaving that we're doing now and so the centre part of it is really dense and energetic and brightly coloured so I'm working with the reds and the yellows there, the ones that we have available to us and then as Sandra said we, um, we're going to use paper panels and overlay some of her print techniques onto the, onto the three dimensional sculpture as well so they really kind of, they're dancing off each other and we're inspired by each other's kind of colour choices and the lines and the mark making and um, I've done some we woven wooden structures before as well but I've never really used rattan before so it's, um, it's interesting for me. It's got its own mind, it has its own direction, it wants to do its own thing and so the form upstairs is not dissimilar to forms I've made before but it's a little bit kind of it's got its own flex and flexibility and when we're making it, the, just the way we lash the, um, the rattan together, it put a, a natural twist in it and so when we finally joined it together we just grabbed each side of it and went twist. And so it's got this spiral in it and that, that comes from the rattan, it doesn't come from us thinking about it, it's just the way the rattan behaved. So that's really exciting I think. It's Maybe two weeks ago, Wendy text messaged me and asked if, we, if I wanted to collaborate and work on an endangered animal with her because we both work with animals in our work. Um, and so I said, yeah, let's, let's talk about it. I had a number of other ideas, but um, the pangolin seemed to fit because it has a lot to do with Cambodia and that we both believe and support endangered animal efforts in all over all over the world and try to make awareness for it that that's the concept for for our piece that we're making right now pangolin animal is uh, greatly endangered because supposedly the scales have medicinal properties which which is not true and so because of the high demand, they are greatly endangered and I'm afraid that they will become extinct in no time. So Sylvie, Leah and I decided to make a pangolin 
And one of the things that we decided to do is make individual scales out of basket material. And I really just wanted to do something that wasn't based on humans, right? Because life is so much bigger than humans. And some of my other ideas were making like what is the beginning of life, like an amoeba or parts coming together, like the thing, the first thing with a skin that was parts communicating with each other and making like a mobile or something that was about communication because communication of parts makes life. And then in CM Reap, we're going to invite the public to put the scale back on the animal. It's uh, intended to be a uh, interactive project and educational as well. So we hope that people can psychologically feel better about symbolically putting the scales back onto this animal and at the same time raise awareness of this animal's um, danger of becoming extinct. I've worked a little bit with bamboo, but not um I've seen, I have some friends who work with it and how challenging it is to get it into the dimension um, that you need to work with it. And I was really, I've been fascinated by rattan. I'm doing some projects in my own studio that have to do with um, sort of the history of rattan furniture. So I was really very excited to learn how to manipulate the material. Um, but it's my first time working with it. So it was great to go to the see how it's processed and then learn. I mean, it's an amazing material. It's sort of making my brain explode a little bit. Um, yeah, it's my third World Wood Day. Uh, I've, I started in Nepal and I was asked to do that one kind of, that was sort of sudden request to be a part of the team. So it was a really cool surprise to get to do that. And then I was in Long Beach and then here in Cambodia. We didn't come in with a really set idea of what we were going to do. We had some, we had been brainstorming, I think, in uh, back home. But part of the thought was to get here and kind of experience the place and see how the material gets worked because it's something that most of us have never done. He said there are these different kinds too, like not just the diameter. Like this is so much softer. I'm a woodworker and Amrita works more with fiber, so it seemed like a perfect marriage of our two skill sets. And the theme is really broad, so we both kind of were like uh, struggling with how to how to figure out how to address that. When we got here, Adam um, started thinking about uh, like the life cycle of a tree. Adam kept doing additional drawings and we were thinking about what comes out of the out of uses of the tree and sort of the, the lifestyles here in Cambodia and we thought a lot about um, the Mekong and the different kinds of life that um, people have utilizing the Mekong, whether it's fishing or working on the um, riverbanks and we are looking at the, the boats and the different kinds of boats that they have. And so we sort of married the two ideas, created sort of an image where you have the stump but, um, of the tree, but the rest of the tree that's been cut turns into um, one of the traditional Mekong river boats. And here, w watching the traditional um, local artisans use weaving, and how I'm used to sort of weaving with, with string and um, you know doing crochet or knitting, and so I'm, so excited to be able to learn from the basket weavers and incorporate that into the image. And the first ideas I had had to do with this cut down tree. I, f I felt like that was a little, um, had a little more to do with death than life. Um, it was focused on these tree rings, which represent the years, but it was very much about the collapse of this thing. Something cut down, ended, um, ended life. So I wanted to, I wanted to sort of emphasize the living aspect of that and then this idea of the cycle of life something dies to create something new that sustains us in some way and that to me is how, where the boat kind of comes in um, and so the 
the sections where the tree is cut that we're weaving with some brightly colored fabric to kind of emphasize the give a glow, a colorful glow to the kind of life force. If you think of a tree as kind of a, the blood, having like blood vessels running through it, we're giving this kind of clean, bright life to those cut faces. And then as it comes out from the larger um, log of the tree, it morphs into this sort of traditional rough boat form, talking about how we uh, we cut down the tree, the tree's life ends, it gives us something new that we can sustain ourselves with. The Cambodian boats have like really bright blues and whites and greens. And we were thinking of green, but it felt, I don't know, too pumpkin-y with the orange, you know, but the blue really was a nice um, uh, contrasting color and it felt really good good to have them together. So, I, and I love blue. So that's why, why we went with the blue and then we added the gold just to kind of make it feel more like you know, decorative for the boat, because they have really beautiful boat designs on the ends of their boats, and they paint them with bright colors, so. I've never worked with that material before at all, um, and in addition to the material itself being new, the way they work with it is also new. So sitting on the floor um, and using my body to hold the material down, um, I was trying to learn and sort of put my body where their body was. Um, so they, it's a very physical material watching the local artisans. So they're, you know, using their foot to hold the basket down and pulling against their body. There's a lot of water involved and um, they have a real sense of like how wet the material needs to be in order to, to bend and to weave. And it's been, it's fantastic. I really like it. Thing is maybe I'll make this two layer. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
the more you know about it, the easier it is to get it to cooperate. Um, this was, it was a big learning experience for us using the new materials. I feel learning, I'm about to, because the, the ring takes extra time. If I can do that and I don't need the ring, that's the best. This is my third time participating in World Wood Day, but only my second time participating in the wood design group. It's been real physical, um, getting used to being here, uh, the temperature and the location has been um, at first a little bit challenging, but I think uh, we all are now used to uh, the region and we have like a routine, <laughs> so it's, it's quite comfortable right now. So I decided to interpret life from a microscopic to macro. And that means that looking at life, maybe not so literally, but more um, scientifically and some metaphors and abstracting them so that we can see different perspectives of life. So what I mean by micro is if we were to look closely at um, cell division, and with cell division, usually that indicates some type of life. The first piece that I worked on, I consolidated many pieces of rattan to create bundles, which I then wove. So instead of weaving individual members, I ganged them up into like groups of 50, and I started weaving them. And that became a nest, which I thought was a metaphor for the environment, for supporting life. The other piece that I'd made um, early on was a wall hanging, and that's based off a traditional caning pattern of weaving uh, pieces of rattan. Uh, but I used um, a kind of a edited uh, version of it where there's like a vine, or like some kind of natural vine going through it. And to me that was more um, kind of nature, kind of weaving into um, our everyday lives. So I was thinking about nature's importance in life, for, for life in general. And then the third piece that I worked mostly here on um, was about kind of cell division. So the form is more abstract and it's kind of not with the defined form specifically and it's it looks like it's moving it's dynamic so it's supposed to depict the cell starting to divide and even though it's woven and it's a basketry techniques um, the idea is that it doesn't have to be literal you know you can still interpret and use these other techniques traditional techniques and present uh, a new perspective on how to depict cell division I love that the bamboo and rattan is so rooted to this location and so I do think it's important to know what materials grow in your region and to try to utilize them so that um, you're being really conscious of your local environment but also that you're not just kind of outrageously bringing in importing materials all over the world just to you know make something that might not be very um, impactful. So I really love that here they've been able to use bamboo and rattan for a very, very long time and be creative with what that can uh, be used for. And I'm really interested in continuing on using it, but I also want to make sure that when I use it, um, I'm not just trying to have it shipped over to wherever I am. It would be great if I came back here or to another region that had bamboo and rattan and worked there and maybe help them with design so that when I leave, they can continue to make some stuff that they can sell. ដោយគឺមានសារៈសំខាន់ខ្លាំងនៅក្នុងប្រទេសកម្ពុជាយើងជាព្រោះប្រទេសកម្ពុជាយើងគឺជាតំបន់ត្រូវពេចក្តៅ
chi vật hiệp cài trên này đá đầm bay cất công cua sa cọt phòng đá hai cây dương nơi chùm rừng bận to tật tiện đầm bay ao cưa rừng hà râm cài trên này bị đá nâng ao miền cài chạm vào rầm cành tạc lăng nơi nông bậc tây cam chi dương hay cọt mọc trắng cưa dương miền rầm tha sáu bãi chật mình tên hay cưa cọt sả lạnh cưa rầm bật cọt nơi rầm đài cọt trăng ban lập bọt pi rồi xây nâng đá nâng cứ chia rõm để bất bà con và hai dương trong bàn tự tu này xin nàm mình nhóm nâng ở rõm nâng thì bố dương rô xí khăn ông vì xài nâng Nên là rõm sạp bài sạp bài chất đại khơi của con màu sẽ là anh nhóm nhóm có sẽ là anh có tổ quên tổ màu như chân tao con ạ rửa ơn thà khả mai thà chuẩn chết quạt sờ lạnh từng ô, bộ quạt thở ban, xây nâng quạt ban, thở ban vơ đôi thang quạt hiện bị bạ chăng quạt ban ban tạm mặt tri pi tri chăng màu vơ nâu ngả lại vuốt, phát đau là chăng tia tàu, tàu mờ khi nhom thở ban là chăng tàu, nhom biên rầm thà thở bãi mũi quạt mỏng mũi quạt, bộ quạt này chặt lo, che, vậy tới rụt vậy rụt tới che, lạnh khi nào mà còn để nhom bột đào ơi mình tính cọt ai bột thôi kêu này mà bây giờ làm thao bài mà một thợ đào khơi cang như một cọt cọt thôi chẳng tấu thì phai đây nhóm mấy thợ làm thao mà chụp bộ cọt đấy vì thao cùng phớp đôi chị chọn thôi cả cho luôn chỉ buổi cọt luôn chỉ nhức nhóc cọt bán bỏ cọt ai mình chơi máu và dương nhóm mấy cọt ai mà chụp luôn buổi cọt có bán đây hả? Ai bảo quạt mình chơi nhưng mà ông đoan thiết có khi ông mà thải đây hả? Well, it's a privilege to, you know, to have that kind of intimate tutorial. I guess the first day we just sat and watched them work. It's second nature to them, so they make it look easy. Because they've been doing it for so long, it probably is easy for them. They're all very eager to help us realize our projects. The Cambodian artisans just seeing how fast their hands move and just watching them work with the material, you know, like because it's so new to me, like seeing that it's repetitive, you know, the repetitive movements um, and just watching them make it has just been amazing. Even though we can't speak the same language, they're showing me with their body and their hands that it's been really fun and every day I think everyone gets more and more comfortable. Like at first we were all like, you know, like, hi, you know, and now we're like, blah, 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 even though we can't completely understand what each other are saying. And, um, and they're, they seem to be coming out of their shell a little bit more and will come right up to me and start talking to me. And I love that because it just feels like we're more of a team. The local artists have been fantastic. We are overwhelmed and humbled by their ability to work with material. They have been a great help. Ron has been helping me make the scales for the pen rolling. And I like to think that maybe they enjoyed working with us too. So um, I think it was a mutually productive collaboration between traditional skills and contemporary. For me, the most important experience was inter interacting more with our local craftsmen. I consider them part of the uh, designers of our pieces. There are suggestions that they give that I think really are helpful and they're even able to follow the ideas that we are trying to put forth. At the same time, um, I think we have shown them something interesting about how we approach design um, and so they'll leave here with uh, a different perspective. <laughs> ไฟก็ยมอัดได้เคยกอดเธอโดยที่รูปสัตว์ไอ้ยังมือต้องน้องได้ให้ตึกตีปีจิตไงนะกดบ่อยยมยมประกอบเธอแก่ประดาวนั
cầm rô nâng đá ta dân thương phát bị cầm rô nâng tì chẳng ấy Ai có khó phát tháng mơ ta hiện ra And I'd like to see that that skill, that craft, that knowledge um, put into making things which are new and more contemporary and, and maybe providing more income for the people in Cambodia. To blending together our, our design skills and their creative, their craft skills. my third time, so I have a little more understanding of how the whole machine works. And I think it really helps that I know a little more about it. But at the same time, I love the mystery too, when you don't know what's gonna happen. So I would say that this really fulfills one of those top adventures which is right up there with Nepal. I think it's a fantastic event. I've met some really wonderful people. Um, just being included in the wood design group has been an honor and a really fantastic adventure. And seeing the musical instruments and all the carvers and their tools and um, meeting the people who have come up to talk to me after the symposium has been really wonderful. I was surprised uh, with the scale of the uh, event. Um, we studied with a small group at the uh, uh, Phnom Penh and I was, I was kind of thinking uh, the extension of that and uh, all of a sudden, you know, huge group here, group of people, very uh, exciting, it's very festive. For me, the most interesting part is the kind of range and variety that we get to experience, so you get to see uh, all this music from all around the world. That's my favorite part, I think, is the music. Um, the artists from all over the place and the kind of blending of all the different cultures is, I think, the coolest part of, of World Wood Day. So uh, that part I absolutely love. Well, this is, it's my second uh, World Wood Day, the first one being in Nepal two years ago. They've both been amazing experiences. It seems like the organization itself has gotten more better with the experience of this annual event. And that was, that was a phenomenal trip um, where we got to see more of Cambodia besides the, you know, the workplace and the hotel. This year uh, has been just really outstanding and um, a different experience for me because I'm working on a collaboration with my husband and just all being here kind of struggling with new materials and a new environment, but it's wonderful. So I, I'm really, again, it's full of surprises. You never know what to expect. Even if you know the schedule, it changes in a really wonderful way. Um, and so it's been a very good adventure, very positive. World Wood Day, well, it's been amazing. Um, I'd, I'd heard about it from friends who had attended in the past, so this was my first time coming to World Wood Day. And I was amazed at just how much was happening at the same time in the same place. So that side of it's been really um, almost overwhelming. It's almost too much to look at. And, um, but it's been really super enjoyable meeting craftspeople and artists from all around the world. And everyone's been um, 
very friendly and very engaged. And it's been more than I expected, um, to be honest. It's been a wonderful event. Um, I feel like the event has fully embraced what Wood is about. In terms of uh, asking artists and designers who work with Wood in very different ways, and also musicians who work with Wood instruments, and the event here, seeing all the different crafts and skills and talents all under one um, tent, and everyone working together and sharing their information and their skills with each other has been really powerful, very powerful and very inspirational. Yeah.